Hi artists, so today I am going to be painting my parrot. I am specifically looking at a photo of a macaw on Google uh, for a photo reference. Um, I am going to be multitasking today with different materials is the way I'm gonna put it. <laughs> or in other terms, maybe cheating a little bit. So let me explain. So the macaw has white on its face and it's very prominently white. And I don't like how my salt dough is kind of like a off-white color. So I am going to use a little bit of acrylic paint that I have at home today. I know not everybody might have this. If you don't and you really wanted white in your painting as well, you could use acrylic that you already have at home if you have it. You could use white out if you have that as well. And you can also YouTube how to make your own paint. Um, I also have a video for that in the virtual art kitchen, if you would like to look at that more in depth. And it's more of like an acrylic paint than a watercolor paint. I am also going to be using my watercolors today. And then I have uh, paper towels, a small cup of water, and then I have my watercolor painting brush and I have an acrylic painting brush because it's a different kind. So I'm going to start with painting in my acrylic so that that's dry by the end because I'm actually also going to end up going in with a little bit of Sharpie on this today. So like I said, I am multitasking here with what I am painting in. So I sometimes have to dab a little bit with the brush to fill in some of the cracks that were created when my salt dough was drying like we talked about last week. Um, so I'm kind of tapping to fill in some of those spaces to make it look nice and neat. And like I said, I wanted to get this part done first so that it could dry because the macaw actually has stripes across the front, which I didn't really realize until I looked more in depth at reference photos on Google. And you guys are more than welcome to look up your own reference photos as well for um, any of the animals that you are creating. I personally don't paint without reference photos even now um, because I have a hard time understanding where light, shadows, details, things of that nature should be without looking at the actual image itself. So when I do paintings, even on the side for fun outside of school, I typically am looking at a photograph and painting from it. Okay. I think I've got it on here pretty well. Got it smoothed out. I'm just gonna check this edge because I'm meticulous, as many of you know. I want to have that painted in as well. And notice that when I do pick up my uh, macaw's head, I'm picking up with two hands and being very gentle. Want to be careful with it, and then I need to paint the eye in. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. I'm gonna rinse my brush off from my acrylic in my cup of water here. Dry my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna set those aside for right now. So now I'm gonna get into the watercolor painting, which is what a lot of you are gonna be doing. I love these brushes that came in our kits. I think that they have been phenomenal. I also don't completely soak the brush. I actually only, you can see me here a little bit, tip the cup. Sometimes I just tap the uh, tip of the brush in. I don't actually stick the entire brush in. The reason being is the less water you use, the more vibrant the colors are. So the, the brighter they look essentially. The more water down the paint looks, then the um, thinner the color will show up on here. So the macaw kind of starts with a little bit of yellow up here. And then I'm still looking at my reference photo. You guys just can't see it, but it's up on my screen. It looks like he goes into a little bit of green in here. I'm gonna turn my plate a little bit to make sure that I can see all the sides that I'm painting. And I'm blending a little bit right here where the yellow and green go in together. And then it looks like from there, it goes into a little bit of blue. So again, I'm not sticking my entire brush in the water, just a little bit, and then just kind of touching, you can see even on my blue here, I don't know if you can see, but not the whole cake 
for the watercolor paint is wet. It's just a little bit because I'm just touching one little spot. I don't want to get um, too much water on there and have the color look really thin and not bright because obviously macaws are supposed to be very bright. And then it looks like from here, rinse my brush off pretty good now. It goes back into yellow down here. And you can see me kind of blending. My, my colors got a little mixed right there and you can see that the yellow and the blue mixing together is turning green. So I just cleaned my brush again and I'm going back in. Kind of smoothing some of that out again, cleaning my brush because I just got a little bit of blue on there and it's just going to keep turning the paint green if I keep going at that rate. Okay, so now the macaw's beak is completely black from what I'm seeing. So I'm going to go in here with some of my black and I might need to layer a little bit, do like a couple coats of paint here, depending on how dark I want the beak to look. Personally, I do want it to look pretty dark. And I'm doing this all with my brush from my watercolor kit that I sent home to you guys. So everything here was done with watercolors except for the white. Teeny bit more water here. Right, and then my macaw also has a black eye on the inside. I'm gonna see how this goes because I really don't want to spread too much and get all over. Okay, so I am going to let this dry a little bit and then I will see you in a few more minutes. back again. So I waited a little bit for my acrylic here to dry my watercolors to dry and I did a little test spot you can see right here. So I'm actually just using a regular Sharpie now. These are the Sharpies I sent home in your art kits. You're more than welcome to use them. Um, I just feel like using a Sharpie in this situation is more beneficial on my macaw because um, there are finite little details uh, in his feathers here. And if I did this with the watercolor paint, I think that it would run all over and you would lose the fact that he kind of has stripes in his feathers. And so I am just going in with my Sharpie. So I'll be back in a minute once I get finished. All right, so I finished with my Sharpie. You can see I kind of outlined the crack a little bit around my uh, macaw and then I outlined his eye and continued with the feathers like I was showing you guys. So I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out in the blending. Um, I will say be very careful with how much water you use while watercolor painting because it can make some of the salt dough soft again. So you just wanna be careful with that. So I am much happier with the way this turned out than my first little uh, penguin that we talked about last week. And um, yeah, I'm happy that it worked out. So I hope that yours does too. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Good luck artists.